Hey guys, welcome back to the weekly worm farm check-in. My name is Steve Churchill with the Urban Worm Company. We uh, got this uh, budget worm farm here that we're nursing back to health. It was I used it as a basis for the how to start, start a worm farm video. I literally forgot about the bin up here in my barn throughout the entire last winter. But damn if I didn't still have a decent population of worms that I checked this spring and I wanted to nurse them back to health a little bit because the bin was neglected. So showing you how that happens is one of the goals of this series. So if you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell to let you know every time we release a new video. All right, let's look at last week. I gave it a really boring feed. I gave the bin a pretty good amount of dry coconut core to sop up some excess moisture, a little bit of playground sand for grit, and a kind of a generous helping of a protein rich worm chow. I just didn't want a watery food waste in a bin that was already too wet. I didn't expect to find too much in the way of breeding happening just yet. Now I did find some baby millipedes that I originally thought were baby red wigglers. I was wrong there, but I did stumble across a couple cocoons. So I've got some evidence that these worms are happy enough to be breeding. So here's what I think we're gonna see this week. It's gonna be drier, no doubt. And the worms should be spread out throughout the mix, but might have a little more concentration up closer to the surface, munching away at the worm chow. I also wouldn't be surprised to see a little mold forming on that worm chow as well. And that's no big deal. Mold is a decomposer. So if things look okay in the bin, then we're gonna give it, I wouldn't call it an aggressive feeding, but um, a little more food waste. Food waste that I'm putting in has been sitting in a bucket on my patio and it's got fruit flies in it. So I'm actually kind of importing a problem into my bin. So this food waste has a lot of banana peels, a couple apple cores and some lettuce cuttings. Again, these things attract fruit flies. I really don't think it's gonna be a problem because there's not gonna be a whole lot of active fermentation that's going on in the bin. That's what actually attracts fruit flies and kind of helps them develop in the first place. And this is a good opportunity to let you know that if you're feeding food waste to your worm farm and it develops fruit flies, it's not like the fruit flies made their way into the bin. It's likely that your food waste had fruit fly eggs on it before it ever went into your worm farm. All right, enough of me talking, let's see what's up in this bin. Right, let's open things up here and like we do every week we're going to talk about our um, temperatures both in the bin and outside the bin so uh, right now in the Philadelphia area it's about 70 degrees uh, outside beautiful day um, it's 50 I'm sorry it's uh, 76 degrees inside the barn here 54% uh, humidity actually the temperatures inside the vermicompost are looks like around 68 degrees maybe uh, 67 degrees uh, this is kind of what I like to call the sweet spot of vermicomposting in terms of uh, in terms of the weather. You know, we're coming out of the hot summer where things tend to struggle in the high in the in the high heat. Things are cooling off really nicely here. Granted, if you're living in San Diego, you've got beautiful temperatures all year round. But if you're kind of in the you know the Midwest or the Northeast, you came out of some hot temperatures, but we're kind of going into the cooler fall. So it's a really great time to be vermicomposting, especially as we got, uh, you know, pumpkins, pumpkin season coming up here, which I'm excited about. So let's look and see what's going on in the bin. I know we talked about what we did last week, which the last thing we did was add a whole lot of um, worm chow. And one of the things you get with worm chow is mold. And I'm gonna tell you, I cheated and I looked at the bin this week and it did have mold inside the bin, but it looks like it is gone now. So you pick up these little chunks. This is kind of what worm chow will look like. Uh, so there's still some worm chow that uh, that hasn't been worked through yet. Thought I would find more worms up towards the top, and sure enough, we do have we do have some. But I thought that the worms might be tucked up underneath the worm chow just a little bit more. But it looks like they're. I found I found a few here. But just like I said, it's not just food that worms like. It's moisture. So one of the things we did last week was we reduced the moisture quite a bit uh, in the worm farm. And we did that so we could actually start with some more watery feedings. And like I said, pumpkin season's coming up. Pumpkin is very, very watery. Uh, so these worms are doing just fine. Um, they ha they're not, didn't really appear to be tacking the worm chow like I thought they might, but the worm chow does appear to be mostly eaten through. Uh, these worms do appear to be in uh, pretty good shape. Um, I mentioned a couple uh, episodes ago that the worms you get from a breeder are going to tend to be the fattest worms that they have. That way they can sell you fewer worms. <laughs> so anyway, worms, once they get into a vermicomposting bin, tend to be a little bit more, uh, tend, to, tend to become a little bit more scrawny. Anyway, I think uh, what I'm going to do this week is we've got a, 
another feeding and I'm only going to do a food waste feeding. I typically tell people like, look, if you're, if you're adding food waste, add bedding, but we've kind of managed this bin just because of our heavy feeding of coconut core last week. I think I'm only going to do food waste this week. So I, I've got this uh, thing here of, we got some, some lettuce, we got some apple cores here and we've got uh, banana peels. Some of this stuff, especially the banana peels had some fruit flies in them. So we may end up getting importing a bit of the problem into our worm bin, uh, which is a good point to bring up about fruit flies because fruit flies, if you leave your food waste out, fruit flies are often gonna visit, leave their eggs, and then you end up putting the food waste into your worm bin, and then you wonder where all the fruit flies came from. Well, you kind of imported the problem into your bin. So um, it's just gonna be a real simple video this week. I'm just gonna lay this stuff here on top, maybe bury it slightly below the bottom. I'm going to kind of make it to where once we lay this on here that the, the bubble wrap is going to going to lay flat. We're just going to put this stuff directly on here a little bit more of a it's not an intense feeding. This isn't a lot of organic waste that we're putting in here. Um, but with the banana peels, the apple cores and uh, this lettuce, this stuff, especially the apple cores and the lettuce are going to break down super slowly. Um, and we're just going to stick this stuff on top and come back and uh, and check it next week. Um, there's not much really else to talk about with this uh, with this feeding this week. Uh, the one thing I, you know, I typically want to check on is what the moisture looks like. And you know what? I can still can still see that I, even though I'm I uh, gave it a really really dry lots of dry coconut core last week. We've we've still got got water that is coming out between our knuckles. But I think that this is an appropriate amount. So I'm pretty happy with where this is. We're gonna add add water this week in the form of food waste. Uh, most of this food waste here is is probably high 80s to low 90%, especially the lettuce and the apple cores, uh, which are gonna break down. So we're just gonna layer this stuff on top and stick our bubble wrap back on, cover it up and call it a day. We'll see you next week. All right, I hope you found that helpful, even though this week's content and the vermicompost itself was a little bit on the dry side, but I think a boring bin is normally a good bin. You can spice things up with a pile of cantaloupe rinds and the worms are gonna go nuts for it. But so will the fruit flies and you might end up with a wet anaerobic vermicompost. All right, come back next week and let's see how the worms and the microbes did with this feeding.